leafhoppers, grasshoppers, and locusts. They really can be a pain in the ass once they get into your grow room. You're here with Mark Batwell at PerfectGardens.com. Please remember to like, a share, and subscribe. If you haven't checked out our YouTube membership site, please go ahead and do so. I've set up an inexpensive way for creating a little bit better communication for people that need their questions answered a little quicker. I just want to say thank you so much to Michael for becoming a new subscriber, and thank you for bringing up the question. He's dealing with the infestation of grasshoppers, and I hope this video is going to give you some type of insight of how to deal with the problem. So leafhoppers, grasshoppers, and locusts are actually all different. Grasshoppers and locusts are fairly similar. They're actually considered to be both grasshoppers. The di main difference between those is that a locust can actually create a huge infestation. You know, you see locust swarms. We've heard about them in the Bibles where they come and destroy the entire crops. These are only going to be issues for growers that are obviously growing in major outdoor situations. For the majority of growers, too, that are growing indoors, they're not going to be dealing with leafhoppers, grasshoppers, or locusts. The main growers that are going to be dealing with them are the smaller outdoor growers that are growing in their backyard. They're not growing in a greenhouse, in some type of protective environment. And for the majority of you guys, I think the number one best solution for dealing with this problem is a shade cloth of some level. You guys don't have to get 30% shade cloths or 50% or 70%. You can even just get a simple 10% shade cloth. Those will protect your plants from quite a few bugs that are going to try to get into your grow environment. Yeah, you're going to be reflecting a little light away, although you always have to take into consideration where are you going to get a better yield with more light or plants that still have their foliage and that haven't been eaten away through bugs. Leafhoppers are much smaller than grasshoppers. If any of you guys are wondering, the main difference between leafhoppers and grasshoppers is leafhoppers will actually suck the sap out of your leaves and will show up in your plants through some type of a malnourishment or plant deficiency of some level. The leafhoppers will also lay their eggs in the leaves, so that itself is just another issue. Grasshoppers will actually lay their eggs in the first one inch of soil. Both pests go dormant in the winter and then come alive when the temperature heats up, so they can very well be with you through the entire season. You can use products like Azimax or neem, although we've talked about already about how neem is oil-based. The reason why they will work though is because these bugs eat the sap or eat the leaf, because the Asmax is a growth inhibitor, it's actually going to starve them to death in a sense. Because if I remember straight, it forces them to grow rapidly and they can't keep up with the amount of food they need to eat. And so they end up starving to death. If I remember straight of how neem works specifically. Another person on the channel recommended Penny Royal Herb. They actually said to take this herb, make it a tea, and then use it as a foliar spray. That this would actually work really well as a repellent for rabbits and other larger critters. More than just spider mites and aphids and the small critters as well. I I actually really like this suggestion. I haven't used it. I actually want to implement it. I'm throwing it out there because I have done a little research and it has been known as a natural pest repellent, literally just by putting the plant outside of your house or different areas where there's ants, it will encourage the ants to not come into your home. In addition, women have used this as a natural remedy to have an abortion, and it has been known to be toxic. So obviously keep out of reach of children, and if you do deal with it on your hands, make sure to wash your hands after messing with it. Just like anything, if you're gonna use something as a pesticide, you have to take it into consideration that it also might, in some level, be a pesticide or toxic to you as well. Grasshoppers will actually eat your entire leaf so either one of these if left unchecked can be devastating in your room if you see a grasshopper find it and get it out of your grow room if you can, in the beginning of the season, put up some type of a perimeter, a shade cloth, something that's going to keep a large amount of your critters out of your grow room so you don't even have to go down the direction of using a pesticide or a fungicide. Yeah, will your yield get hurt? It could, possibly. Although, like I said, what's worse, not bringing in the yield because your foliage was eaten up or because you reflected 10 or 20% of the light coming in, into your greenhouse? That itself probably is going to be benefit on helping control the temperature and creating a better overall grow environment. These pests can be very easy to deal with if you're thoughtful in the beginning of your season and they can be a pain in the butt because you can go outside and if you find the right grasshopper that really loves your plant you could be missing a huge amount of foliage fairly quickly. Please give this video a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe.
because at times roots can bind together at other times we can transplant into into the ground using a jiffy pot which is very normal jiffy pots are over at orchard home depot we don't think that a pot that is meant to biodegrade could cause root bound issues like this